Um, there will always be a, a demand, a market, a need for a premium music service because there are elements, um, there, w there will always be people who want more than just listen to music. They want uh, better quality or um, exclusive things or earlier things or some, some news, some added value to it. And also this market the is not the mass value? market. It, 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 there will be a market for this need, always. So what are the, some of the added values that you bring? Well, we have uh, the, the high quality, for example, 320 kbps, that's mm -hmm. higher than iTunes. And, um, well, it's, uh, we have uh, early um, Veröffentlichung, uh, release, early releases, and okay. we have um, a community also at DJ Tunes, for example, where you can have a profile, and we're working uh, on it to, to combine it with the existing uh, social networks. And so there are um, elements that are uh, going for, um, behind iTunes, for example. Mm -hmm. And how do you compete? Uh, well, there's obviously there's uh, audio formats, there's the breadth of our catalogue and uh, carrying a number of specialist genres that the online superstores, if you like, haven't quite got into. But I think now is the time to have a, uh, a debate about uh, how dance specialist stores can uh, compete and work uh, alongside uh, superstores like Amazon and Play that are starting to break into uh, more specialist uh, dance genres and, uh, and are offering, the, uh, at present, their lower quality audio formats, but they're offering uh, large chunks of content that the dance specialist stores carry at a much lower price. And, I mean, there are a number of ways that it could be tackled, but I think it needs to be tackled by the industry as a whole if the industry wants... Such as? Well, I mean, one option could be that dance specialist stores are allowed to sort of compete on an even basis, so they're, they're actually, they have licensing agreements that allow them to offer product at, at that kind of price point. There's things is that... Is that a licensing issue or is that a pricing issue? I mean, in other words, if, if, if a label's giving a better price to Amazon or iTunes based on volume, how do you ever compete against that? Uh, well, it's you know, it's up to the label, isn't it? If they want the, you know, there's there's volume that they can get off these uh, stores, but if they also want the kind of profile and the credibility of having of having a high profile and dance specialist store, then uh, then you know, we have to work to find a way that that we can compete more effectively. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, it's the it's the um, you know, we have deals with aggregators that preclude us from some aggregators that preclude us from being able to offer. Um, to offer downloads at those prices. And in the current economic climate, there have been cases what where do you mean people... It I'll elaborate without saying... I'm not asking you to say who it is, but give sure. me an example of something that would preclude you from being competitive. Well, that you know, we're not able to offer a, a lowest quality audio format. We're not able to offer it at a price lower than... gross retail price of lower than 99 pence, for instance. Or that the minimum... Uh, payback that uh, we have to pay the aggregator on every single download is at such a level that you know we would be losing money on every download if we were to drop the price immediately to 69 pence. Okay. And for you? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think there is an, an, an argument in that. I mean, as one of the things that we've had as, as dance music niche stores is always, as, as David said, the breadth of catalog and the fact that going back to 2005 odd, I think when most of our sites started is, um, you know, we, we did almost anything to get in as many labels as possible. But as more and more of the labels join big aggregation services, um, and, and it's not so much you knowing about a specialist label that your users want and s finding them and seeking them out and having a direct relationship, a direct contract whereby they send you a CD that half the time when the CD arrives doesn't have anything written on it, but you <laughs> would, you know, you, you would put it in and then brilliantly th there would be a directory named with the name of the track, which if you happen to notice from that label, then you go, oh, okay, it's from that label. And then you would reconstruct the metadata. So there was a lot of sort of dog work to, to make sure that we had the breadth of catalog. As more of the labels kind of evolve and they join aggregators and then part of the aggregator deal is locked into the site and there are minimum PPDs and that kind of thing. Right. And you know that that aggregator is wholesale, you know, dumping that, that uh, th their catalog into those bigger stores, then, then we, we, we lose some elements of the, of, the, of the sort of exclusive content that we had that might have, might have made us different. Um, and, I, and I think that's sort of what's David, what David's referring to. So as more and more of that becomes available. Although, that said, I think there's still depend... It, it, what Spotify have done so well, just to come back to the example, <laughs> is, is they've 
exactly addressed. We're changing the name of the panel. It's now that, that, Spotify. That, it's not the digital. You, you, I don't. I don't actually work for Spotify. I'm <laughs> DJ Download. Um, but no, but they've ad fan, they, they've addressed the consumer needs, and and it works perfectly. Now, similarly, um, electronic music. Um, aficionados and DJs have different requirements the way they shop um, and I think all of our stores in different ways um, address um, those needs. We have a fantastic little player which you can see a waveform of the entire track and you can actually in 30 second seg segments listen to sample the entire track. Um, rather than, you know, if you go to iTunes or play, I don't even know what play on Amazon are, but it's probably a 30 second sample. Right. A lot of the time, it's a 30 second intro. Now, if you want to buy a dance track, you do not want to listen to a 30 second intro before a, a drum kick has even kicked in. So that's one so, concrete way to so compete. Plus, if you're shopping within a niche environment, all of your recommendation engines are geared towards what other dance music aficionados and DJs are buying. It's not diluted by the fact that you're on play on Amazon and someone that might have randomly bought. Um, uh, or might love Britney Spears buys Kelly Rowland singing on uh, David Guetta's new track because it's Kelly Rowland um, and, it's, and, and they like the track. That kind of dilutes the recommendation. So right. if you're really into like German techno, it's unlikely that play an Amazon recommendation is going to lead you on a great expl exploratory journey. So you've really got to dig deep into what your customers want and make sure that you address those needs. And I think those people you know, will, will kind of survive if, if you're really catering to what they want. Okay. Coming. I was just going to say that you know the longer previews, the fact that you know uh, Gino will recut a preview to the to the uh, to the hot part of the track, but there's still the case that then the dance specialist stores through their previews, for example, can become Spotify style research tools, and music users will find what they want using those, and then go and buy it elsewhere for thirty pence less or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had a question before. You you were sleeping across three chairs in the airport, and the woman across from me was complaining about it. So I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> I was very. She thought you were very, very rude that you were sleeping across three chairs. Oh, I was ahead. British, honestly. Hey, what can I tell you? Uh, on, on that point, <laughs> developing on, I'm I'm intrigued to know how hardware was support offering added added value through these niche download stores to consumers, and coming from the consumer focus group, or coming from the dance niche environment. How can streaming, the links with hardware, support download platforms being at the forefront in comparison to subscription-based streaming or free streaming offerings? There you go. Yeah, our, our concern obviously is that we, you know, we recognize that the way people are consuming or experiencing their music has changed, you know, from vinyl to CD and now download music. And, and our challenge, I guess, is to make sure that our equipment that's used, whether it be at home or in the club environment, is able to, uh, you know, enables people to use that music successfully. It, <laughs> no, I mean, we, we have no allegiance well, to I mean, anyone. Well, let's go a step further. I mean, Pioneer, you've got a big, you've got a big installed base of hardware users. Why, not, why, why is there not the Pioneer Download Store? Or a Pioneer Download Store that's powered by somebody up here? Well, we, we've, we've never felt that it's necessary to get involved in, at least in the last 10 years, in, in publishing music. We used to have a business in that way, but now I the free services out there? Well, at Juno, I suppose we've, we're a um, slightly different case in that historically we've, and we've still got the physical store, and we've also moved, moved into a DJ equipment store. So if you like, we're a, we're a one-stop shop, and there's lots of opportunities for uh, partnerships, for cross-promotion, uh, et cetera. But, I mean, to move it back to the digital focus, there's, that, there's still that debate to be had about whether... Uh, such partnerships would lock, you know, if, if the playing field's not even, I suppose, then partnerships that, that kind of lock us into deals with hardware suppliers are great, but if we're still not able to get consumers the music at a price where they're able to get it elsewhere, then... Yeah, but are they, are they that price sensitive? If you're offering the service, don't you, don't you provide a benefit where it's, it's not a matter of whether it's 99p or $1.29 or whatever? I mean, isn't that irrelevant if you're, if you're solving the need in a much better way? Or is it, do you really feel the price sensitivity is an issue? 
Uh, it's one issue. It's not the issue necessarily, but it's, it's certainly one issue. Okay. Another question that general, well, let's see, on the aisle, why don't you do the gentleman on the aisle there? Which, down the center here. Ma'am? The guy in, st straight down here with his hand up in the aisle and then the, over there. In a, okay. Um, could I just ask, uh, could you each maybe give us a, a top tip, if that's the right choice of phrase, uh, for how to maximise promotion through digital? Um, and if maybe a free opportunity, and if you have money, what's the best place to spend it to get that promotion? Interesting. Thoughts? I'm stuck on the other side. Oh, okay. Start <laughs> with the other side. <laughs> Geez, that, that's, that's quite a tricky one. I, I would be inclined to suggest that... What's um, a clever promotion you've seen? Well, what's something you've seen somebody do that brought t attention to their music to you and, and moved them up in the queue? I'm just, I'm just trying to think if there is something particularly clever. Nobody's doing anything clever? Well, I would no. say that actually the, the, the top tips really are not so much necessarily about doing the really, really clever things. There's some real basics that get, get, get you out there. I mean... Uh, whether it's directly or you do certain key stores directly and, uh, and get your product in other stores through an aggregator. It's like you raise your profile by having your product on a number of different stores. I mean, in the physical world that Juno comes from, you wouldn't stock your records in just one store. Why do that digitally? You know, people, like, you have got customers who are faithful to particular download stores. You've got customers who will shop around for the best price or whatever, and you need to have a profile on each of those stores.